there's no re objection to escapism in the right places. In fact, C.S. Lewis once remarked to me, the only people who don't like, who object to escapism are, are jailers. And uh, <laughs> we all want to escape occasionally, but science fiction is often very far from escapism. In fact, you might say that science fiction is escape, is escape into reality. It's the fiction which does concern itself with m real issues, the, the origin of man, our future. In fact, I don't think, I cannot think of any form of literature which is more concerned with real issues, reality. Well, what do you have to say to that, Professor Hawking? I don't believe in stories of flying saucers and other unidentified flying objects. If time travel were possible, we should have already been visited by people from the future. I think if we were being visited by people from another time or another planet, it would be much more obvious and probably very unpleasant. I don't want to make contact with another civilization, except at a safe distance. It might be like the North American Indians making contact with the white men. I bet they wish they had never sold Manhattan. I'll bet they did now. Carl, you are the world's leading expert in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Now. Professor Hawking doesn't want to make contact with them. Why do you want to make contact with them? Well, uh, first off, I would say we have little choice in the matter. Um, that is, uh, we uh, have already announced, or rather I should say, Magnus, uh, you fellows have already announced uh, the fact that there is a low-level technical civilization in this part of the galaxy because television programs uh, get out at the speed of light. Uh, and uh, since any uh, other civilization who detects those signals is unlikely to be uh, at or before our state of technological advance, since we've just invented radio technology, so to say, they are much more likely to be in our technological future. And uh, the question as to whether their intentions are uh, benign or otherwise is, of course, of interest, but we have uh, nothing to say about, uh, about the matter. So, uh, therefore, I think uh, we might as well hope that it's benign if they're, if they're out there. From my point of view, the search for extraterrestrial life, and especially the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, is one of the key philosophical, scientific, and human questions that have been posed. But we are at the very beginning of searching. Surely it is important for us to know the answer. One thing that interests me a great deal is the way in which the public perception of uh, beings from outer space have, have changed over the years. They used to be the baddies. But now there is a, there's a sort of optimistic feeling that, that any extraterrestrial life is, if not benign, is at least not as, as hostile and aggressive as one used to fear. Is this the drift of your writing as well, Arthur, uh, your thinking? I, yes, I'm an optimist, and I believe that any malevolent super-civilization would rapidly self-destruct, as we may be in the process of doing ourselves. So if we do have contact, physical contact with aliens, I think it will be benign. My frivolous mind is much is taken... Are very intelligent beings reasonably near? Why have they not visited us? Well, that's a very good question. Let's throw it right across to Arthur Clarke. There are literally dozens of answers to this. They may have come in the remote past. They may be visiting us every 10,000 years. I mean, the universe is a huge place, and even if there are fleets of survey ships going all over the cosmos, we shouldn't expect visitors less than I say every thousand years or so. They may know all about us and they may have put a quarantine around our planet for pretty good reasons. They may be totally uninterested in us, they may be so much higher that they, you know, we just beneath their, beneath contempt if you like. That we don't, you don't can speculate endlessly. I think we should just wait and try and get more evidence. Maybe their space probes are saying there's no intelligent life on Earth. They may have received our television programs and decided that that is the case. <laughs>
May I uh, uh, attempt a, a different answer to uh, to Stephen's question? Please do, Carl Sagan. Um, the uh, the first large-scale commercial broadcasting on the Earth was in the late 1940s. Uh, so that's what uh, 40 years ago. So you must imagine a spherical wave expanding out from the Earth at the velocity of light, which contains all the dreary programs of the late 1940s. Since then, that expanding spherical wave containing the uh, news of a developing civilization on Earth has traveled some 40 light years. Suppose that there are no civilizations closer than 40 light years. Perhaps they're not here because they don't know we are about just yet. But uh, in time, the message gets to them. And uh, perhaps they uh, send a little expedition to look us over. I, I was delighted when I read that when space probes went out, out first of all, you put the figure of, um, a, of a man and a woman on the outside so that any alien life would recognize what we looked like. And then in a latest probe, I think you put in an LP of Earth sounds with uh, instructions in hand signals on, on how to work the LP. How do you think anybody would have reacted if, in fact, alien intelligence had heard this LP? <laughs> My guess is that it would be something like, uh, oh, look, another artifact from uh, some extremely primitive civilization. Which one is this? Uh, but then some degree of uh, thanks that uh, we were thoughtful enough to send a message into the far future, which could in no way benefit us, uh, certainly a selfless act, and uh, perhaps it would be recognized as a um, hopeful and optimistic gesture by a, uh, an emerging civilization just setting foot into the great galactic wilderness. Yes, Arthur. I know what is going to happen to your voyagers, Carl. They'll be overtaken one day by a terrestrial spaceship and brought back to the Smithsonian. It uh, <laughs> it's certainly technologically possible, but I hope they uh, let it go on its uh, original mission. Now, it's very nearly 20 years ago since man landed on the moon. Do you think that we've basically stopped trying to get man any further? Is there any chance that another Neil Armstrong will set foot on Mars in our lifetime? The United States and the Soviet Union have managed to uh, booby-trap the planet with about 60,000 nuclear weapons, with a little help from Britain, France, China, and Israel. Uh, a tiny fraction of those weapons is enough to uh, destroy the participating nations, uh, certainly, the global civilization possibly, and uh, the human species just maybe. Uh, it is now time for the United States and the Soviet Union to demonstrate that they can undo this specter, that they can demonstrate their ability to work together on high technology for peaceful, uh, hopeful purposes that carry us into a benign 21st century. And uh, that is why I support the idea of joint U.S.-Soviet cooperation in the exploration of Mars leading up to a, uh, an international manned, and by the way, womaned, uh, mission to the planet. Americans and Soviets as representatives of the human species, other nations I presume would also be involved, and then a glorious, whatever it would be, few month period in which Mars, I, I have a globe of it right next to me, in which Mars would be explored. There are hundreds, for example, hundreds of ancient river valleys uh, on Mars. Mars